G'day, it's Timbo Turtle time. Today it's time for Why Did Captain Cook Burn the Flat Earth? This is James Cook. While he was a lieutenant, the Royal Navy and the Royal Society combined to send him off in the HMS Endeavour in 1768 to try and find Terra Australia Incognita, or what was known as the Undiscovered Southern Land. He also had a secret mission on the way to see the transit of Venus, but that's another story. Having successfully found the east coast of Australia, this brought him some fame, and they made him a captain. The British government, with advice from the Royal Society, commissioned James Cook, now captain, to circumnavigate the globe by going as far south as possible and while he's down there, to see if he can find any other great southern lands. Knowing that this was not going to be a small endeavour, they gave him two ships, the Resolution and the Adventure. The second, the Adventure, was captained by Captain Tobias Furneaux. Now some flat earthers would have you believe that he couldn't go south because of the ice wall, and he just followed the ice wall all the way around the world. Now I mapped out on a flat earth map Cook's journey and this is what they would have you believe. After leaving England they made their way down to the Cape of Good Hope. Then for some inexplicable reason rather than going south they head east. They don't veer up to sort of map the southern part of Australia which they knew was there. They supposedly can't make it any further south because of the Great Wall which he does talk about encountering huge ice fields, which prevents him from getting as far south as he would like. The ice and weather become so bad, he heads to New Zealand. On this flat earth map, that leg would be a whole 48,681 kilometres, give or take a bit. He then spends a bit of time, about a year, mucking around in South Pacific, which I'll explain shortly, before he heads off towards Cape Horn. He continues on from Cape Horn to get back to the Cape of Good Hope and consequently circumnavigates the world and then heads home to England after being away for three years. So what really happened? Let's have a little look at that second leg of his journey. This is a chart published after they got home with the path accurately plotted upon it. You'll notice Antarctica wasn't on there because it wasn't mapped. But I've put it on there to give you a bit of reference. Now you can see from this they did head south until they couldn't go any further because of the ice. But at this point they have broken the record for travelling further south than anybody else. Conditions were harsh as they encountered little but ice, as you can see from these pictures drawn by the onboard artist William Hodges. The ice and weather so bad they decide to head north. The two ships become separated. So they head for New Zealand, which is their agreed upon rendezvous point. Now on a globe, this would be about 13,600 kilometres. They then mucked about in the sunny South Pacific for about a year. They even took another stab and made it a little bit further south than they did before, but didn't encounter land. After which, they then head off from New Zealand to the bottom of South America at Cape Horn, and then on to the bottom of Africa at the Cape of Good Hope, officially circumnavigating the world, and then finally they went home. This was a three year journey, and there's a lot of things I have not mentioned. There are a few key points I'd like to draw to your attention. They did all their calculations assuming the world was a globe. If they were wrong, they would never have found New Zealand. He only mapped it on his first journey. If the Earth was flat, he would have been missing New Zealand by about 10,000 kilometres. And just to prove my point, the adventure, having got it separated, also made its way to New Zealand. And as you can see, the resolution made pretty much a beeline straight to it. They knew where they were going. If they were using this map, as I said, they would be a long way out, because this leg of the journey is three and a half times longer by going this way. And to make it that distance in the time it took to travel, they would have had to go 396 kilometres per day. 
and that would be need to be constant for 123 days. In the ship's logs, they showed that their record speed was only 338 kilometres a day, and that was a once-off. The Flat Earthers often only look at the total journey time. And as I said, one year of that was mucking around in the South Pacific. So for them, the numbers just don't add up. People will know they'll have an excuse. Maybe he turned on his engines. Or he's a NASA shill. But for me, I can only marvel at what they're able to achieve. Equivalent to landing on the moon, almost. For their time. So, well done, guys. And this is Tippo Turdy at saying, see you later.